Okay, when thinking about the book Zero, the first thing that came to mind was mathematical philosophy and how I thought that that term in itself was kind of like an oxymoron because um, the two things like have been broken down and they seem like opposites to me. Like mathematics have always been like structured and solid and philosophy is something where you can explore and it doesn't like have a certain like path to follow or mm -hmm. anything. Um, all of our lives we have been taught the facts of math with no room for elaboration. We've been taught two plus two equals four and that's a fact because we're told so. We are spoon fed facts and how to apply them to other numbers. Then once we think we understand it all, geometry is introduced and then we get the concept of infinity that is thrown at us. Now all of a sudden mathematics is not so finite but it's just another philosophical world to explore. Um, the first thing that came to mind after thinking about that was um, the movie we watched when about Turing and Gödel, and Turing said that he the reason that a lot of mathematicians went mad was because um, they couldn't decide or they couldn't figure out if uh, like a mathematical problem was either improvable or if it was just a really difficult problem that took a long time. So what I was wondering is how do you know the difference between like when something like the difference between the two. How do you know if it's that difficult or if it's improvable? In response to your question, Roxy, um, I think that we can't, we don't really have like, there's no basis for the difference between them. Because, and I think that's how math is related to philosophy because it's just, it's kind of thrown into there because we can't really prove any of it. Mm -hmm. And so philosophy, I think philosophy and Science and math were both based on philosophy, and because philosophy is just like, it's it's big ideas, and that's basically what math is, it's just like elaborating off that. Yeah, and I feel like that's the way that like math got started, is because like, to do anything with math or science or anything, that something had to be assumed. Yeah. And so that kind of makes the structure of it a lot weaker, but we can't, like, we weren't given anything when we are here, like someone had to create it, or someone had to figure mm -hmm. it out, so... That's something. And, like, one thing that I was thinking about was, you know, I feel like everything in the entire, you know, world comes back to the question, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about what came first, you know, <clears throat> math or the universe, because you can't really, if you think about it, you can't really have one without the other. Mm -hmm. Like, there could, there really couldn't be a universe without math, and there really couldn't be math without the universe. Well, obviously, but... And it's like, you think that... The first thing that I think of when I hear that is that, well, math probably existed, but no one knew about it until mm -hmm. the universe was there, yeah. but how would we know if it existed exactly. if we're not there? So, um, another thing I found in the book Zero, it said that the study of calculus defied the logic of mathematics, and scientists had to take a leap of faith to accept it. So even one of like the strongest studies of math like, oh, some people are very apprehensive about it before accepting it. Mm -hmm. And now it's, like one, of, like, one of the most widely taught subjects in math. One of the hardest subjects in math. Yeah, the concept of infinity. Um, and one thing that I, when I was re-going re through the book Zero, the whole thing about adding zeros and adding infinity, like, it totally went against everything that philosophy talks about. <clears throat> And um, that even like our basic, mm -hmm. no, our basic like knowledge goes to show, like you can't add infinity because it's infinity, and you can't add zero because it's zero. Mm -hmm. You're gonna always end up with the same number. So yeah, and um, with infinity, I mean, reading the book zero, like you just like get a headache from like having to try to comprehend like what infinity is mm -hmm. like no matter how hard you try or how many times you see the symbol you're never going to completely understand what it is yeah because it's just like um like also it said in the book absolute zero like it talks about like concepts but it also said the absolute zero is an unattainable goal i don't get how they can come up with something that's unattainable like yeah. what how do you know it is what it is if it's if it can't ever happen yeah, like, we have the saying, like, nothing is impossible, because if you think about it, like, we can't come up with ideas that are impossible. Yeah. We always have to come up with something that's provable, that's, you know, 
it's finite and that, yeah. Basically, you know, it goes back to the whole math and philosophy is intertwined because math is based, like, it it rests upon the foundations of philosophy. Mm -hmm. It rests upon um, just thoughts and ideas. And it can't, you know, we can't really base math as a as a fact because really we don't have any facts in the world and we treat math as it is like our only facts but usually like when you have like because it is ideas and when you have ideas like that they're not finite that's mm-hmm. what that's what I'm so confused about math for because math is finite like like you said like two plus two is four where we don't argue that and I don't know it's just yeah, but, like, going back on math, like, even though these things are facts and they're proven, like, okay, they're proven, but that proof is based on an assumption, so mm-hmm. it's meaningless. Yep. And, like, all, everything in math is just, like, a, I feel like it's just a, um, like, a symbol for something. It's not actually, like, the number. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's... <laughs> that pretty much covers it of <laughs> mathematical philosophy how even though it's supposed to be finite it's also so much room for elaboration and when everything is based on something that's assumed it's not really proven so and I think it like it basically <clears throat> says that philosophy there's room for philosophy in everyday life um I think philosophy is based like everything is basically based off philosophy because in order to have a concept, you have to have an idea first. And that's where philosophy comes into play. Thanks for watching.